uh, as a uh, spiritual advisor of uh, Singapore, Buddhist College of Singapore, Associate Rachel Umas, CFM qualified MBSR teacher, UK Oxford Mindfulness Center. And also he has experience UK Oxford Mindfulness Center, USA CMSC Mindfulness Cell Compassion teacher in training and mindfulness meditation teacher certification program certified teacher. Now he has been already on the Zoom. He is ready for ready for giving us a superior lecture. I just welcome all uh, students from the Faculty of Humanities, Faculty of Buddhism, and also from IBSC to pay attention to when recording the, uh, in progress. Special lecture. Now we are ready. I just would like to invite Venerable Dr. Renzo, please give our, uh, give us special lecture, please. Yeah, could you make me the co-host? I will share the screen. Long my person, you know, I can be a co-host. I just contact with my team. Just wait when the door is set. Just wait, sir. So we can take this time to set up now. We, have, uh, we give you up to 11, 11 or 11, uh, 5 or 11, 10. What time in Singapore, sir? Yeah, now 10, 0, 6. I see. One hour. One hour is faster than Thai? Yes. I see. Yeah, no problem. Right. Okay, right? Yeah, no. Nah. All right, I say okay. Just wait for IT office. Hmm. Now 30, 30, 30, 30, 33 students. From the faculty, we have the students faculty from the faculty of Buddhism and faculty of humanities. Venerable sir. Actually, the uh uh in ep okay now yes when there was a i think you can share it now. yeah please you can get started yeah you can make me the focus otherwise maybe students may not able to see my screen and uh, always focus on your speaking if I I cannot I cannot hear you properly. Yeah, someone can you can make me the focus. Pin my my screen and uh, then every student can see. Yeah, we we can see now. You can we can see you are. Yeah, when. When you are talking, they only see your your face, not my face. Oh, I see. Yeah, please turn on camera, students. Please. Yes, please, please turn on your camera. Please. Okay, when it was, uh, you can start now.
So have you seen students when they're also? Yeah, when bro, lectures, professors, all the fellow students from MCU. It's my honor to be here, share with you something about the meditation, what I have learned and also what I have done in Singapore. So before we start the session, let's just do a very brief check-in exercises. So this exercise is called uh, three steps breathing space. You can find a comfortable posture. Gently close your eyes or lower your gaze. Feeling you are sitting here. The first step, aware, be aware of your thoughts, emotions, maybe physical sensations. What's happening in your body, in your mind? Allowing them coming and going. Step two, gathering attention to the breath. Just noticing when you are breathing in Breathing out. Step three, expand. Expand your awareness from breath to the entire body. From top of your head to your neck, shoulders, upper part of the body, buttocks, legs, down to the foot. Take the body as a whole. When you are ready, slowly open your eyes. So you can see the picture. I use the metaphor as a sand clock. You can identify what are the three steps. It's easy and you can apply in any moment when you have some kind of situation or difficult emotions. So this practice is from MBCT. So today, the outline of the content will be a brief introduction, what is meditation and the objective of meditation, how we practice meditation, different types of meditation, and uh, also introduce meditation courses in Singapore and uh, some centers and organizations uh, who promote mindfulness meditation. So, Originally, and we can see that the meditation is uh, from the Buddha's teaching uh, and uh, slowly developing uh, in the past two millennia. And also uh, in last century, 
1780s, Westerners, they try to apply meditation in different field, like a clinical uh, application or in hospital. So we can see that uh, from the early time after the Buddha awakened uh, under the Bodhi tree. So this is the key point and uh, a turning point that uh, the Buddha start to deliver his realization and uh, his teaching to the uh, following bhikkhus and uh, lay people. And uh, then slowly coming to the early Buddhism and uh, then sectarian Buddhism and uh, Mahayana and uh, even coming to the contemporary traditional meditation, especially Burma and uh, Thailand, Cambodian, Vietnam and Sri Lanka. And then coming to the Western uh, integration and application started from uh, 1979, which is uh, the uh, MBSR founded and uh, slowly spread uh, to the world. So what is meditation? Uh, it's an English term and uh, in Pali, it's Pavana or Bhavana, which means cultivation cultivate the beautiful qualities of mind, such as loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, equanimity, etc. So if we try to put uh, these words into Chinese, there are different uh, uh, words we can translate as chan uh, xiu, normally in Buddhist term, or yoga, uh, following the yoga tradition, uh, ming xiang, and uh, Jingguan, silently observing, which means observing the mind body, what's happening in your mind body process, or Jingxing, quieting the mind. So as we can see that the meditation is already uh, go beyond from monastery to society, uh, no longer uh, monastic privilege and uh, enter into the mainstream of the society, like uh, into the hospital, schools, even corporation, psychology, uh, neuroscience field. So it's already beyond the religious context and the belief system. So already make a meditation more accessible for general people, even they don't have any belief system or non-Buddhist. So the objective of meditation, so if we correctly understand what is the purpose and how we practice meditation, we know that the meditation is to get to know how the mind operates, which means the function of the mind. It's not about the body, it's the mind. Sometimes we can notice that our mind is so busy just like the monkey jumping from here to there. And uh, through meditation, we can learn to recognize and distinguish the qualities of the mind. Sometimes unwholesome thoughts arise. Sometimes wholesome thoughts arise. You know, then most of the time, we never notice that uh, in every moment, what kind of state of the mind occur. Are we following the desire, hatred, or ignorance? Or are we following the non-desire, non-hatred, or non-ignorance? These are totally different. And then learn to recognize the traits and the function of the mind. And the meditative mind should process the wholesome qualities that can collect the pure data, which means what we see just as what we see. What are we hearing? Just as what are we hearing? There's no need to judging this uh, view or this form or this sound is good or bad. Uh, so good or bad is our judgment. It's occurred naturally. It's arising and passing away naturally. And uh, cultivate the good qualities of the mind, especially the awareness, uh, let it happen. 
and uh, originally it means non-forgetfulness, smarty, which means remember, remember what's happened in the past, remember what's going on now, and remember what will happen in the future. So once we develop uh, and strength awareness, all other qualities also will increase. If we look at the uh, three conditions, there are uh, many rich resources in Theravada, Mahayana, and the Tibetan Buddhism. So as you may know that uh, in Theravada tradition, few sutras are very important for practicing meditation, especially the Satipatthana Sutra, Anapanasati Sutra. So all the structure of mindfulness techniques were given by the Buddha. So besides the Theravada resources, there are many other Mahayana meditative scriptures that can trans back to early of second or third century AD, uh, Tier Dang Dynasty. So they were preserved in Chinese Buddhist Tipitaka and it was still unknown by Western mindfulness teachers. So most of the Western teachers, they're following Theravada tradition, but uh, very rare, they spend time on the Mahayana uh, meditation uh, practices. So in one of the Mahayana schools, uh, Tian Tai school founded by Master Zi Yi, had a commentary on four foundations of mindfulness from Tian Tai school perspective. So unfortunately, it's only available in Chinese and not yet translated into English. So as well as his most comprehensive treatise, The Great Concentration and Insight in Chinese, we call it Mo He Zi Guan. It has 10 volumes, which talk about the meditative experience, even the obstacle uh, happened in the meditation practices. So we, so he wrote uh, many meditative textbooks for the beginner, uh, for the uh, intermediate students and for the advanced practitioners. In Tibetan Buddhism, it also contains a very, very systematic teaching of meditation, including the Great Perfection and uh, Mahamudra or Dachen from ancient Shantideva to modern influential Lamas and the Rinpoche. As you know, many uh, Lamas and the Rinpoche, they taught meditation in Western and have a big impact on Western society. So in all three traditions, it combined with theoretical teaching and the experiential practices in order to gain deep wisdom and a profound realization. So when coming into the uh, new age that uh, we can see there are some development after the traditional meditation practices. So we can see two dimensions. One is still remaining on our Buddhist community. That is a soteriological orientation. We're pursuing the uh, ultimate freedom, liberation. But in another dimension is called a clinical orientation, which means the apply the meditation for different uh, group of patients, like people who have uh, back pain, uh, severe pain, insomnia, stress, or any other health issue. So from soteriological perspective, uh, it has two types of meditation, shamatha and vipassana. But uh, from healing perspective, uh, it's called a mind-body medicine meaning the goal is different and uh, it's just uh, pursuing the mental health of a happy life so it has three types mindfulness compassion and loving kindness but of, of course sometimes we combine together in different uh, programs so in western they already developed uh, many kinds of uh, mindfulness based and uh, compassion based uh, intervention programs like uh, uh, in mindfulness, MBSR, MBCT, MBCR, uh, cancer recovery, especially for 
people who have a, a different types of cancer. Uh, and uh, mindfulness based relax prevention. Mindfulness based uh, childbirth and the parenting for women. And the uh, compassion program, compassion focus therapy, mindful self compassion, cultivating compassion training, compassion based uh, cultivating training is combined with uh, Tibetan Buddhism, the Tonglen practices, giving and receiving. But they, uh, they interpret in psychological language or in modern language, which is uh, more accessible for people without uh, any background of Buddhism. So as we know, in tradition, uh, Buddhism meditation, uh, we classified two types of meditation. Uh, which is called uh, samatha or concentration uh, in Chinese, zi. Pay attention to one object. We just uh, choose one object as a primary object. For example, choose breath as the primary object. Then continuously pay attention and focus on the breath to cultivate and develop the quality of peace, stability, so this is one part and another one is called uh, vipassana or inside mindfulness in Chinese we call it guan, observing all phenomena, all the happening, arising and uh, disappearing, like uh, feelings, body sensations, thoughts, emotions, images, ideas, whatever, even obstacles. So in order to uh, get a realization, we must have to understand what's going on and understand that everything is depends on the condition. When conditions are ready, it may arise. When conditions, uh, you know, come into the finish, then the phenomena will also come into the uh, disappearing. So just use the two pictures to illustrate what's the different function of concentration and the mindfulness. So like uh, the left picture, you can uh, probably play the, when you were a child, use the magnifying glasses uh, to kinder the mat, the catch, the match. So once the sun is uh, moving and you also need to turn the angle of the magnifying glasses Otherwise, the, the, the focusing point will change. You must uh, focus collecting all the uh, sunlight and focusing onto the tip of the match. Otherwise, maybe move to other places, then the match cannot be kindled. So this is a function and the practice of concentration. And uh, once we come into the mindfulness practices, it's just like uh, use a telescope to uh, see a whole picture, a whole view of the landscape. So, but uh, you have to adjust the degree and make it uh, clear. It's not in the vague state, must be very clear, very sharp. Then you can notice what's going on and uh, observing all the details. So just use the diagram to uh, illustrate and you can probably easy to get a, a sense what I'm talking about. So the concentration, maybe there are many other objects. They can be called the distraction, the sound, the sensation, the emotion, the thoughts, and uh, all the stories in your head. And uh, But uh, remember, just uh, uh, bring your attention to the breath. So the breath as a focus, not the other objects. So you can let other objects as a background. You don't need to pay attention to that. Just ignore all of the uh, other objects. And uh, once came into the awareness or mindfulness practices, so there's no distraction. Every object, whatever it is, can be the object for your awareness. So the breath, can be the object of awareness, sound, sensation, thoughts, emotions can be the object of awareness. So basically there is no exclusion for the awareness, but in uh, concentration practice, it has a high demanding, especially for the environment, like uh, 
you need to find a quiet place uh, to practice concentration. So concentration practice works on primary object, uh, normally brace other objects regarded as distraction. When noticing the distraction, just bring back to brace, maintaining attention on the brace as long as possible. So if you practice concentration, you can just uh, choose one primary object and continuously uh, put your attention on the object. Doesn't matter what happened else, you, you, you just uh, you know, forgot about them and uh, do not shift to other objects if they are arising. Of course, sometimes it's challenging because it's, uh, like uh, when you sit too long, the pain is so severe and uh, so obvious, then naturally your attention will be uh, shifted to the pain and uh, you forgot your breath. But uh, the invitation is just coming back to your breath again and again and again. And uh, in mindfulness practices, there is no distraction in mindfulness practices. Everything is included. All the objects are equal. No one is better than another. So you don't need to take uh, any preference in mindfulness practice. You can choose the breath. You can choose sounds. You can choose images, sensations, thoughts, or emotions. But for the beginner, it's better to choose the breath or the body sensation because the breath and the, the body is always present. If you choose thoughts or emotions, maybe you will be overwhelmed by the thoughts or you get lost in thoughts or in uh, negative emotions. So before we can handle our thoughts and the emotions, uh, uh, it's easier to be with breath and uh, body sensation. And the two types of awareness, the first one is called a focused awareness, maintaining awareness on one object for a period of time, from breath to sound, to sensation, to thoughts, to emotions. Normally in mindfulness uh, programs, there are certain sequence. So just like uh, building a scaffold uh, from the first uh, ground level, then slowly up to high level, then you can slowly build in the skill to manage how to observe all the different uh, objects. And uh, another is called open awareness. Whatever arises in the space of awareness, just notice without holding anything. Either the sound or image or breath or thoughts, emotion, image. So they, there probably there is no particular order. Suddenly, one image arising in your head, then the next moment, maybe you can hear the sound from outside of your room. And then next, you may feel pain in one part of your body. So there is no particular order. Then you just open awareness. So it's the practice of noticing the quality of your awareness. So it's nothing to do with the object. Object is just to increase or enhance the quality of awareness. And you can practice without object. You don't need to find out any object to practice. You're just noticing how is your awareness now? How is your quality of or your awareness now? So you can look at this picture and uh, awareness is like a flashlight. Once whatever arising on the stage of platform and uh, you can see whether it's your breath or body sensation or any type of feelings or thought or emotion, whatever arises, you just noticing without interfering. All memories, images, sounds, sensations, whatever, just uh, turn your awareness to the object. So it's not uh, run away from that. Especially if there is a pain, there is a discomfort, you don't necessarily to run away. You just uh, approach to that pain or discomfort. Then you have interest and openness to see what's going on, what happened. 
how does it change from moment to moment? Is the pain become severe or become intense or reduce the severity? So once you can understand that the pain is not permanent, the pain is always changing. As well as other uh, feelings. So the principle of mindfulness meditation, this is important because sometimes we have a, a wrong idea or wrong attitude towards the practices. So mindfulness practices invite us to have an open mind rather than clothing. And uh, in a very relaxed way, rather than striving to achieve a goal or achieve a particular state. Often we say that uh, uh, you don't have, have nothing to you have you have nothing to achieve. Just uh, be where you are, be whatever it is, and uh, investigate rather than judging. Oh, this is wrong. Oh, this is right. Whatever arises, it's okay. Like the pain or negative emotions or negative thoughts, it's okay. They arise and they will disappear. And the discovering rather than creating, which means sometimes we try to create something. But in mindfulness, we don't need to create anything. We just discover, oh, pain is arising. Noticing, oh, there is a thought, oh, the past memory coming back. So just discover and uh, noticing. And uh, also, we practice meditation to become familiar with our experience. Before, maybe many things look quite strange. We never know. Just like uh, we meet a friend or meet a stranger. First time, we just know a little bit about uh, this person. Then slowly talking to him or her. Then we get uh, more information, more data, and uh, know more about him or her. So in the same way, we practice meditation to close to our experience, to close uh, to our body, our mind, rather than ignoring, like uh, even the pain, discomfort, or negative emotions, we try to run away. But uh, in meditation practices, we not try to run away. We are facing them, whatever it is, and uh, let it be. Sometimes this is very difficult because uh, we, we have an uh, autopilot mode, uh, 3F, fight, flight, or freeze, or try to resist, to push them away. So let it be just like a, if pain arise in your back, in your shoulder, in your neck, or in your head. So how we can let it be? How we can give some space for the pain, for the discomfort? And the connecting rather than separating. So most of the time, our mind and body are separate. Body is doing one thing, mind is doing another thing. But uh, in mindfulness practices, we connect the body and the mind through the uh, breath. So the breath as a bridge to connect, uh, to coming back to the present body and the mind together. So process a model of mindfulness meditation. So one of the attitude is very important is kindness, bring kindness to the practices. Before we practice, uh, we can set the intention for what kind of purpose uh, we practice meditation. For lay people, Maybe they have a lot of stress, anxiety, worry, or depression. They may try to reduce the stress or symptom or increase the well-being to be uh, much happier, 
to be satisfied or someone may be very interested in the self-exploration or maybe for monastics, uh, we try to pursuing the uh, ultimate freedom, whatever. So this is the intention. Then how we can bring attention, how we can training the mind, the quality of the mind, set down the mind. So most of the time without the training, the mind is just uh, running from here to there, uh, disregulated. So once we practice concentration, uh, we can uh, slowly focus our mind to one object. Like uh, for students, uh, we have to bring our attention to the subject uh, we are learning, especially when you are sitting in the classroom. So probably there are some distractions outside of the classroom, some background noise, or you know the dog is uh, barking, then your mind will be uh, shifting to the outside sound noises. But uh, you remember, just uh, bring your mind back to the classroom and also be open to whatever it is. So following the breath, if the distraction arise, then just uh, aware, aware that uh, whether your mind is ruminating or worry or have some kind of anxious, so, uh, or mindless wandering or daydreaming, uh, fantasizing, whatever your mind is doing, you have to be clear of your mind. Then regain attention, folks, just uh, bring back your mind to the primary object. And uh, the attitude, once the mind wandering happened or daydreaming happened or fantasizing happened or ruminative mind happened, you don't need to judge yourself, oh, I'm wrong, or I'm not a good meditator. So all this happened uh, very naturally, nothing bad, and uh, no need to criticize yourself, and uh, just accept uh, as it is. And uh, also be curious, yeah, how the mind wandering? Where does the mind going? When does it come back? So with curiosity, then you can coming back to the present. So different meditation practices, uh, like uh, in, uh, of course, in tradition, uh, Buddhist meditation, uh, very uh, few practices we often uh, following, uh, sitting, walking, or in daily life. But uh, in uh, modern mindfulness program, uh, there are many, many different types of practices. So they divide into small portion, uh, like uh, mindfulness of breathing, uh, sitting, walking, and uh, also have a lying down, uh, body scan, or lying down yoga or standing yoga, uh, body stretch. So uh, the body is also very important uh, medium for us to cultivate awareness. Loving kindness meditation, compassion meditation, and uh, mindful listening, speaking, especially how we can apply mindfulness uh, into interrelational or interpersonal uh, activity. So once we communicate with other people, how we can be mindful, how we can be present, do we have some kind of impulse to interrupt other people's speaking, or do we have uh, impulse to uh, add something or to put our judgment, to put our thoughts, our opinion before they end their speaking? So all this we have to notice. So in order to have a very uh, small communication, we have to be mindful, uh, be aware. Once uh, they finish, then we start to speak. So mindful speaking, when you are speaking, you can notice how your mouth open, your muscles of the mouth, your jaw, and uh, your volume of your voice, whatever. 
you can notice. So the meditation courses in Singapore, uh, if we look at the Buddhist meditation, there are different types of uh, tradition, like uh, Vipassana by Goinka, Vipassana by uh, uh, Burmese meditator, uh, meditation master, uh, Mahasi Siado, or by Wu uh, Dejaniya, and uh, also following Mahayana practices like Chen by Master Seng Yan from Damajam and uh, Chen Master Song Sen from Korea. And uh, in Tibetan, so they also have Dachen, uh, the Great Perfection, Mahamudra, uh, the, and uh, by Vietnamese Zen Master Mindfulness, uh, Kin Nai Han, and also our abbot, uh, who also promote uh, relaxation and uh, mindfulness. But for modern mindfulness courses, uh, we have different types of programs like uh, MBSR, MBCT, MBCT for Life, MBC, uh, MBTI, Mindfulness Based Therapy for Isomania. Especially nowadays, uh, many young people who may not able to sleep well. Uh, so, especially in Singapore, very highly uh, stressful society. People uh, have a, a sleeping problem. Uh, many people, they need to take a sleeping beer. So uh, this program is especially uh, designed for people who have uh, sleeping uh, difficulties. And uh, mindful self-compassion, especially for people who have a very uh, high demanding, like uh, easy to criticize, easy to deny oneself, self-judgment, or the negative uh, emotions, negative uh, thoughts towards themselves. And uh, also uh, search inside yourself. It's a uh, uh, program that uh, can be applied uh, into uh, business uh, setting, how we can uh, bring mindfulness into the uh, cooperative world. Okay, so uh, let's do a very short uh, uh, guided relaxation practices. So this is uh, uh, often taught by our abbot. So most of the time, we, we don't know how to relax. We think uh, listening to the music is a way of relax. Of course, it can have some kind of uh, short-term benefit, but uh, in long-term, uh, still, uh, we need to find a different way. So let's just uh, take a comfortable posture. Gently close your eyes or lower your gaze. Keep your back upright. Put your palm on the lap, on, on the knee. Noticing your buttocks touching the chair or the cushion. the gravity of the body, the weight of the body. Then slowly breathe in, breathe out. Gradually bring attention to the top of your head. Noticing What's there? 
what kind of sensation, what kind of feeling around the top of the head. Does it feel heavy or light or clear or unclear? When you are breathing, bring the breath to the top of the head. And breath out, relax, top of the head. Not try to relax. You have nothing to do, just naturally following the breath. Breath in, breath out. Then slowly come into the forehead. When you breathe in, bring to the forehead. Breathe out, relax the forehead. Probably you can silently speaking, relax. Relax, relax. Then come into the temple. When we feel nervous, anxious, this part also feel very heavy, rigid or tension. When breath out, relax the temple. Then come into the ear. Breathe in, breathe out, relax the ears. The eyes, eyeball. Relax the eyes and come into the facial muscle. Your nose, mouth, tongue. Noticing how is your teeth, whether they are naturally losing or biting together. Tightly. Relax your jaw. When you breath out, just letting go of any stress, any tension. Then coming to the back head. Then to the neck, two sides of the neck, the throat. Breathe in, breathe out, relax the neck. And come into the shoulders, letting go of all the Stress tension around the shoulder. 
relax the shoulders. And coming to the upper back, middle back, lower back, the spine bone from the neck, slow down. To the tailbone. Relax the entire back, spine bone. And coming back to the chest. Noticing any sensations, feelings around the chest area. When you breathe out, relax the chest. Noticing your heartbeat, the lung, stomach, liver. Diaphragm. Breathe in. Breathe out. Relax all the internal organs. And come into the belly. Relax the belly, belly muscle. And slowly come into the arms. Relax two arms at the same time. Upper arm, elbow, forearm, then to the two hands, relax the palms, fingers, then come into the buttock, breathe in, breathe out. Letting go of the gravity, the weight. Relax the buttock. Then moving down to the upper leg. Breathe in, breathe out. Relax the upper leg. Then coming to the knee. When breathing in, bring attention to the knee. Breathe out, relax knee, left knee, right knee. Then go down to the lower leg, the calf, the muscle of the calf. Breathe in, breathe out, relax the lower leg, and come into the anchor, to the foot. Breathe in, breathe out. Relax the anchor, the foot, the sole of the foot, the toes of the foot. So take the body as a whole. Breathe in. Imagine there is a hole 
on top of your head, just like a wheel. Then go across the entire body, down to the foot, when breath out, go from the foot. So the whole body is breathing. When you are ready, slowly open your eyes. Okay, so we just finished the guided relaxation practice. Uh, let me check how is your feeling right now. You can use the chat box to type some words. How do you feel right now? You can use the chat box. Okay, someone said peaceful. Relaxed and empathy in the mind. How about other students? Peace of mind. So thank you for your sharing and uh, we just uh, moving forward. So now just uh, introduce some of the Western mindfulness program, how MBSR came to be. So basically, uh, it's uh, originated from uh, Dharma Foundation. But uh, uh, John Kabazin is not uh, using or uh, take a Buddhist uh, terminology into MBSR program. He reinterpret in a very uh, simple and uh, understandable language. So in the uh, MBSR program, of course, there are some elements we can find uh, from the root of Buddhist uh, practices, like Four Noble Truths, No Way to Full Pass, Dependent Arising, Three Marks of Existence, Four Foundations of Mindfulness. But, uh, you know, it's not uh, in the same uh, structure in Buddhist meditation, but uh, uh, in a different way, different modality. And also for immeasurables, uh, non-duality, skillful means, uh, the Buddha nature, 
and pertinent uh, even use Conan to investigate uh, who you are, uh, what you are, who you really are, or who is breathing. Just like uh, use this kind of Conan-like uh, 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 question to let you be curious about your experience. Then combined with science, like uh, stress physiology, neuroscience, uh, psychology, uh, etc. Uh, then slowly coming into the uh, structure of MBSR. So uh, if you are interested in this program, you can uh, search in from YouTube. There is a document called Healing and the Mind. It's uh, by uh, Pierre Moyes, uh, conducted in 1993. So uh, it's 40 minutes plus uh, documentary, and uh, you can look at uh, the history of MBSR and how John Kawajin uh, taught MBSR uh, in hospital. Then from MBSR to MBCT, so originally we can look at uh, the, there are two uh, uh, interdisciplines that uh, from Western tradition, uh, there are uh, different elements uh, like a vipassana tradition, Rinzai, uh, it's a, a Zen school, uh, Rinzai and the Soto, uh, and the yoga tradition, uh, Krishna Muti philosophy, Ramana Mahasi uh, spirituality, uh, and uh, also evidence science like stress physiology, cognitive psychology, uh, also applied some Buddhist psychology and the uh, neuroscience, mind, body, and medicine. So you can find uh, all the uh, resources that uh, John Kabat-Zinn integrated, then uh, forming the MBSR program in 1979. So this is one of uh, his uh, classical textbook uh, for MBSR, for catastrophic living, as we are now in a very terrible world. Right, so we cannot change it, but how we can live with the world, uh, with so many uh, disaster, virus, and uh, probably this is not uh, the first, and uh, it also not uh, the end or the last uh, COVID. And uh, then CBT, Cognitive Behavior Therapy in 1960, so, combined with MBSR, the three uh, psychologists and the neuroscientists, they're working together and uh, form a new program called MBCT, who is specifically, specifically uh, designed to reduce the symptom of depression, especially for people who have second time uh, relapse episode of the depression. So uh, this picture are uh, just uh, for the uh, three guys. Uh, they went to uh, UMass Medical School. They learned from John Kabat-Zinn. And uh, when they back to UK and uh, started their program, but at the beginning, there is an interesting thing. They just, uh, you know, read the script for the participants, but finally they find the effect is, was not so good. And uh, they, they was very curious what's going on, what happened, why uh, it is in this way. So then the sick time, they went to the USA again, UMass, and uh, they noticed how MBSR teacher guide the participants or the students or the patients, they found that the teacher embodied the mindfulness. They are just not just reading the script. They themselves practice mindfulness. So when they return to UK, they also start to practice themselves. Then slowly they find the effective uh, for the patients were very good. So in mindfulness teachers, the requirement is that uh, what you practice, you teach. It's not what you, you don't know you teach. 
So here is the uh, brief uh, structure of the MBSR uh, program. Uh, I'm not going to the detail due to the time limitation. So e each week uh, we have a uh, different themes. Normally uh, before the class starts, uh, there's a uh, introduction session for people who decide whether they are going to take the class or not. So in the uh, introduction session, you may introduce what is mindfulness, what is MBSR, and uh, also can guide the uh, participants uh, go through some experiential learning. So especially the sitting or mindfulness breathing or do a very short body scan practices. So they can test what's uh, the flavor of the course. Then slowly every week, there are different themes and different practices. And uh, in between week six and week seven, there's a, a weekend one day silent retreat, like a, a mini retreat. Uh, uh, normally in traditional uh, Buddhist practices, we take uh, five days or seven days or 10 days or even longer. But uh, for more than busy people spend uh, one day uh, away from uh, digital devices, mobile phone, computer, email, it's not easy, but uh, once they, they can engage with the silent uh, retreat, they will find that uh, they can, they can do it. So in one day practices, the teacher will guide uh, through morning to the afternoon or different practices learned before uh, in previous uh, sessions. And uh, at the end of the course, even though uh, temporarily we say it's the it's the finish of the course, but uh, it's the beginning of new life and it's the rest of the life for the practices. And uh, in MBCT, it the seems slightly different, but the main practice is quite similar. So in each week, uh, they have a uh, different topics, different themes. Once the students sharing and uh, the, the teacher will bring out the theme, it's not uh, just like uh, the knowledge deliverance, it's through the experiential learning. What they discovered, uh, use the resources from the students, from the participants, then illustrate the, uh, the topic or the theme of the uh, course. So similarly, there is a weekend, uh, one, side, one day silent retreat uh, between the week six and the week seven. Uh, the, the hour may be slightly shorter than uh, MBSR. MBSR normally uh, 7.5 hours or uh, in MBCT seven or six hours. And the uh, MSC is uh, another one. Uh, Eight week program uh, also have a different themes, but uh, MBCT is uh, not like a MBSR or MBCT. Have a long practices. The requirement for homework is uh, less heavier. For MBCT and MBSR, the homework is a very important part of the course. So every day, uh, the participants or the students need to spend. Uh, 45 minutes uh, to practice the formal meditation and the informal practices and uh, apply mindfulness into uh, daily life, daily activity. But in MSC, uh, it's, uh, it's just uh, maybe 10, 15 or 20 minutes uh, to what uh, you can do. And there is no pushing, uh, no need to try too hard in a very relaxed way. But uh, Interestingly, the weekend, it's a half day retreat, also a silent retreat. And uh, after week five and uh, before week six, also have a very uh, various practices, uh, what we learned in the previous session. And uh, each week, they also have different uh, topics, different themes, different exercises. So 
in our monastery uh, by effort, we have six week relaxation and uh, mindfulness meditation. So many the structure is uh, like this, the, uh, the instruction about 15 minutes, then sitting meditation, uh, 30 minutes either guided med- uh, relaxation or mindfulness of breathing. So maybe uh, interchangeably one week by another week and uh, then working meditation 30 minutes then finally, uh, QA for 15 minutes. If some students have question or uh, doubt uh, or challenges, so uh, before COVID, uh, most of the time uh, we use the hall non form. So this is uh, the largest uh, hall uh, in our monastery. So normally, average class. Uh, sign up by uh, 300 people and uh, some may not able to take the seat. So once open online, they register online, immediately the seat uh, will be occupied. And uh, during COVID, we only limited for 50 people who can uh, take part the course. And uh, in 2020, we are not able to conduct because of the uh, government policy and uh, we also have uh, weekly meditation group practice people just uh, coming no need to register and uh, uh, one uh, venerable will guide them uh, either sitting or working or give some short talks before COVID we can uh, meet face to face physically but uh, COVID arising then uh, we shift to the online uh, through the Zoom platform uh, by Venerable Chuan Hang. And uh, by me, so after I complete the uh, MBSR teacher training uh, practicum in 2015, I start to teach MBSR uh, eight week courses. So also conduct uh, two days workshop. Uh, so also can have uh, few hundreds of people can join the workshop. So this is uh, the whole of non-form from uh, the bird's eye view. Uh, so uh, it's called a uh, formless. It's uh, the Dhamma meaning, especially in the Diamond Sutra, uh, we, uh, or the Heart Sutra, the uh, form is empathy, empathy is a form. So it has a four flaw. And, uh, so we use the fourth floor to uh, organize the big events. And uh, in 2020, we finished the new building about, about the meditation hall. So the meditation hall, it has five floors. The first floor is a library, just in this part, uh, picture two. Uh, in the meditation hall uh, completed in 2020 April, and we had a purification ceremony in June. So the second, third, and the fourth are the same, uh, but the second is much higher uh, than the third and the fourth. So it's open for the public, and the fourth, the, on the top, the fifth floor for monastic practices. So uh, if without COVID, uh, each floor can accommodate two, two, uh, 200 to 250 people meditate together. But now we only limit it for 50 people. So it's uh, uh, empathy. There is no Buddha statue inside the uh, meditation hall. Just uh, use the open space. So no need to attach any object. And the, the right picture is we doing the purification ceremony uh, in June uh, 2020. So in the future, we plan to conduct the daily meditation classes, regular courses, uh, meditation workshops, and the silent meditation retreats, maybe five days, seven days, or 10 days, or even longer. So uh, 
outside of the meditation hall, there is a uh, stone Avalokiteshvara uh, Bodhisattva statues. So also about the uh, give an open opening speech to celebrate the completion of the this uh, big project. So the official ceremonies uh, uh, maybe need to wait after the COVID ending. And uh, I also conduct uh, the one day workshop inside the uh, meditation hall. And uh, we have to keep the distance uh, and uh, everybody need to wear the mask. And uh, beside our monastery, there, uh, there is another organization who conducted the international uh, uh, mindfulness conference, invite uh, the international uh, mindfulness experts, scientists uh, to uh, talk or give a keynote speak. And uh, from uh, Brown University, Oxford University, and uh, UCSD, uh, and uh, from Singapore. So this is uh, 2018 and 2019, we have a physical uh, workshop. I also attended, uh, almost 1,000 people attended uh, the two days conferences and also have some workshops. Uh, and uh, 20, 29, uh, 21, so due to the COVID, uh, they shift to the online, uh, use Zoom uh, platform. So also two days uh, conferences invite the uh, uh, distinguished guest speaker uh, from uh, around the world. So this is uh, 2021 uh, and uh, ten, uh, next, uh, this year coming soon uh, uh, in July, also have a uh, conference again. So this is the uh, 2020, the whole year program and the uh, uh, by Brown Center. They also try to promote mindfulness uh, uh, to the public from uh, youth to uh, adult, then to the uh, elderly people, uh, cover whole range of the uh, population. And uh, another one is by a mindfulness teacher coalition in Singapore and Malaysia. We have a group of uh, MBSR, MBCT, MSC teacher who run uh, online uh, talks uh, during the COVID-19 because at that moment, people were very stressful, very anxious every day, so many cases. And uh, so we support the people to uh, uh, join our talks and the one day retreats, uh, even they bring uh, their kids to join the uh, one day silent retreat. And uh, also we have uh, some online forum uh, talks, uh, like a panel discussion. Uh, each of us give a brief instruction, leading a, a short exercises, practices, and then have a QA session. And also run different uh, programs, MBCT, MBCT for Life, and the MSC by some other teachers. And uh, also, uh, I conduct uh, the uh, weekly classes, like uh, the course structure. Uh, you can notice uh, even the one and a half hour, how we can design the course, uh, like practice 30 minutes, then small group sharing. Uh, if online put into the small room, uh, two or three in uh, together to sharing, uh, each one have uh, three or four minutes to sharing what's your experience about the practices, then coming back to the big group sharing uh, and uh, then have a theme talk or maybe uh, spend a time on QA. So uh, just uh, uh, like this, uh, I conduct uh, the one day workshop, uh, the four day schedule is like this from early morning nine and uh, then to the afternoon, uh, five o'clock. So uh, I put the time uh, and uh, you can notice, so each of the practice is not so long, you know, for modern people, they cannot sit for one hour or 
so we have to reduce the sitting time and the working time, uh, 30 minutes to 40 minutes or 45 minutes maximum. So they can uh, doing uh, uh, sitting and the moving stillness and uh, you know in different uh, format that will be much easier for them. And uh, also different practices, uh, focus on the body work, mindful movement, and uh, also during lunch break, uh, also give some instruction how to be uh, mindfully eating, to take the food and uh, really chewing the food, just focus on the food without a mobile phone. And uh, also introduce Ba Duan Jing Qi Gong, like an episode of the uh, circ. Uh, so many for the body work because uh, now people sit too long, especially in the office or, you know, not to uh, exercise the body, the muscle uh, become very rigid. So this kind of ba and can uh, practice anywhere. You know, even you stand in the toilet, uh, just do one of the posture, and uh, you can find the resources uh, on the YouTube. So it's not the the the, the uh, eight practices don't take too long, just uh, ten to twelve minutes, and you can follow in the sequence. Uh, each uh, exercise and the posture can uh, evoke your energy. And relax your muscle. Sometimes our shoulders is, is very discomfort or tight or tension. Then how to move the shoulders and relax all the stress, uh, the the tension. So uh, you can try. And the meditation center or organizations in Singapore. So there are uh, some uh, small organization uh, run by different people, uh, mostly by lay people, like the golden space. So they they also have a different types of meditation, not necessarily Buddhist, but uh, maybe integrated with a secular or spiritual tradition, then combine together how to fit into the uh, modern people. Uh, they have uh, different types of courses for kids, teens and adults. Uh, they also have so many types of classes that they are uh, categorized into balance, empowerment, health, and the relationship. So through the interaction uh, with people, uh, with small group of people, they can learn from each other. Just like in MBSR, MBCT, or MSC program. Then another one, Open Center, uh, focus on teaching mindfulness to both kids and adults. So mindfulness awareness camp for kids aged six to 12 and uh, MBSR for adults. So some of the teachers, they trained uh, in USA or uh, in uh, uh, Australian, they also have a uh, uh, experience to teach this kind of uh, courses. And uh, also use uh, another tools like uh, singing bone or have different uh, instruments to awaken the energy in the body. So use the sound, the creativity, the visualization, breath work, movements, yoga. Uh, so it's some kind of combination for uh, different people. And uh, uh, Tibetan, uh, Tradition, the guided meditation classes at the Katamba Meditation Center. They often uh, organize some uh, small courses for different people and uh, practice uh, modern Buddhism, uh, how to apply Buddhist teaching into busy life. So uh, also uh, they introduce the teaching uh, in a modern way and accessible way. And from Indian, the Art of Living Foundation. 
some of you maybe know, some of you maybe not know, but it's also promote uh, the happiness, well-being uh, for people. So it's a global nonprofit uh, humanitarian and uh, education organization. So it's run uh, globally in 155 countries. So they offer the famous happiness program. Uh, sometimes they also organize a uh, three-day retreat or long-term uh, courses uh, weekly. So which include guided relaxation and meditation along with light yoga and the Sahaji Samadhi uh, meditation, which means effortless. We don't need to try to be so hard. Uh, so uh, in a very relaxed way, also can practice meditation. In, so then another one by uh, one of the Indian famous yogi, uh, Isa uh, Sakuru. So he has some program called Inner Engineering. Uh, so it provides tools and a solution to empower, uh, to create uh, your life, uh, to pursue your goal, and uh, gives you the opportunity to intellectually exploring the basics of life using method from the uh, distilled essence of yogic science. So they also introduce the meditation practices and the yoga and the uh, different uh, uh, method to integrate with your life, to exploring uh, the meaning of life, uh, to balance the body and mind emotions. So the value of mindfulness uh, and compassion is not only limited in the temple, but also can bring into hospital for doctors, nurses, and the patients, especially in the hospital. We can see there are so many kinds of uh, suffering, so many kinds of illnesses. So the Hospital is the best place to see all kinds of suffering. That's why John Kabat-Zinn bring mindfulness into the hospital setting. The doctors also have stress the, uh, the, because of the relationship with the patients also sometimes very challenging, uh, especially now during the COVID. And the nurses who have a lot of uh, workload and how to uh, release all the stress, all the anxiety. Even for the family members of the patients, if the patients are uh, diagnosed with a severe uh, illness, then probably uh, it's a big burden for the family. And also can bring to school, the teachers, students, parents. So th you can see all the, like uh, the triangle, so how the teacher guides the student and how the parents guide the students, they are both uh, and mutually impact each other. So for example, if the students practice or the kids practice, the parents don't practice, then still there is a gap. So we wish that the family members all can practice uh, mindfulness and compassion, loving kindness, then they can talk in the same way. And uh, also bring to Congress for the politicians and the uh, uh, judges and the prison uh, places, uh, prisoners like Vipassana in India, uh, the Goenga promote and bring Vipassana into the prison. And uh, it's a big transformation after they attend the 10 days Vipassana retreat. So there is a big shifting of their mind. And the officers, leaders, bosses, staff, employees, whatever. So even bring into the army, to the soldiers, they also need to training, to training the strength of awareness. So mindfulness and the compassion can be applied for all human beings, no matter how old you are or how young you are because suffering and a challenge exist everywhere. 
at home, at a school, at a workplace. And the freedom and the opportunities are underneath what we can find the value of the mindfulness and the compassion. So we have to uh, think about, you know, we are not just uh, to promote or to get a more Buddhist, but uh, in a way, in a large or in a global perspective, then how we can promote uh, the human well-being, whether they are Buddhist or they are non-Buddhist. So lastly, just uh, uh, share a comment with you. Uh, Huike. Huike is the second patriarchy of uh, Chen school uh, in China. Uh, Huike seek for coming mind. Uh, he visited Bodhidharma. Bodhidharma is the first patriarchy of uh, Chinese Chen lineage. So one day Huike went to Bodhidharma and asked it, Master, could you come my mind for me? Bodhidharma said, hey. Hand over your mind and I will come it for you. Hey, 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 hey. Huike searched within and then told the Bodhidharma that he could not find his mind. Bodhidharma then said, There, I have already come to your mind for you. When Huike heard this, immediately he got enlightenment. So it's a very subtle, profound transformation at that moment. Actually, where you can find your mind. If you cannot find your mind, why, why, you, are, why you need to pacify your mind? So uh, just to give you some reference, if you are interested in MBSR, MBCT, or MSC, and uh, one of the book uh, that uh, edited by our uh, vice rector, uh, Venerable Chuan Shen, uh, from Buddhist College of Singapore, published a few years ago, and uh, a lot of scientific paper about uh, mindfulness. And uh, these are the uh, classical textbook of MBSR, so the work, workbook, or the workbook is uh, easy for students to understand, to apply, and they also have some audio file. You can listen to the instruction and the following the practices, and uh, you also can find from YouTube, there are many audio recordings and uh, practices. So the uh, last practice, uh, we can do a very short uh, loving kindness meditation together. Again, find a comfortable posture. Gently close your eyes. Slowly breathe in. Breathe out. No need to control your breath or change your breath. Just following the natural reason of the breath.
and gently bring attention to your heart region. Following the breath, the heart becomes softer, tender, open. You will hear some metta or loving kindness phrases. You can repeat silently in your heart. Or even you can create your own metta phrases, which is suitable for you. May I be peaceful. May I be secure. May I be healthy. May I be happy. You can repeat a few times by your own pace. Then extend this kind of wishes to your loved one. May you be peaceful. May you be secure. May you be healthy. May you be happy. And you can imagine that uh, he or she received your loving kindness the smile on his or her face. The joy on his or her face. Then extend to your parents family members, brothers, sisters,
may you be peaceful. May you be secure. May you be healthy. May you be happy. Then slowly extend this loving kindness to your friends, classmates, colleagues, wherever they are, how they are. May you be peaceful. May you be secure. May you be healthy. May you be happy. and extend to all the people on this planet, whether we know or not know, whether near or far, May all beings be peaceful. May all beings be secure. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be happy. Just imagine that this kind of loving kindness, like the light, spread to east, south, west, north, above, below, all the directions. And at the same time, we also receive loving kindness from all the directions.
Then slowly bring attention to your breath again. Just check how is the breath right now? How is your body feel now? How is your mind feel now? And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes. Thank you for your attention. So still have a couple of minutes. Anything you want to share or asking, and uh, then we can have a conversation or dialogue. So you, you are convenient that you can turn on your camera and then we can see each other. If you have any uh, thoughts or any ideas to share or to ask, so this is the time. And you, maybe, I, I don't know whether you can unmute yourself, then you can speak out or need the cost, need the host to help you to unmute. Okay, now we still have uh, eight minutes left. Because uh, everyone, if uh, you have the question, you can ask or sharing to Ajahn, uh, Venerable Dr. Renzu, yes. Madalena, do you have a question? Good morning, Ajahn. I don't have a question. It was very clear. Um, Venerable Doctor explained it before. It was very clear. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much, Madalena. Thank you very much, Ajahn. Yes. Venerable Chief Duke? Uh, no, Ajahn. No question, Ajahn. No question? Uh, it's very, very clear, Ajahn. Okay. If Ajahn asks you about uh, what is the meditation, you can answer, Ajahn. Yes? Okay. Venerable Inaria, do you have a question? Uh, yes, Ajah. No question, Ajah. Yes. <laughs> very clear. Very clear, right? Uh, yes, Ajah. This morning is my experience is very good. Yes. Yes, uh, no, yes Ajah. Uh, so, uh, overall, I can say today is great for me, Ajah. <laughs> thank yeah, you. Good. Okay. Yes. Thank, thank you, Ajah. Okay. Venerable Binora. Um, I have no question, Ajah. Yes. Everything you, clear, right? It's very clear, I think. Okay. Venerable Pinyasu. No, it's not. It is clear. Yes. Okay. 
Azan, can I say something? Yes, yes, sure. I want to thanks to uh, Venerable Dr. Rangsu because today not only the lesson was very clear, but also the guidance part of the meditation, it was very good. I think all of us, we experienced that. Yeah, as, as what the other, my classmate said too. Thank you very much, Ajahn. Okay, yes. Thank you very much, Madalena. Yes. Okay. Yes. Everyone didn't now have the question. I would like to say thank you to Venerable Dr. Rinsu so much. So today, Ajahn making us more knowledgeable about the, what is the meditation, how to apply meditation, medita meditation course in uh, Singapore, uh, how to practice the uh, Qigong practice, yes, and uh, the value of the my mindfulness in the hospital, in school, yes, in army, yes, this is the really uh, useful. Okay. We will continue to use the knowledge that Ajahn uh, has given us for future development. Finally, Ajahn would like to invite all of the participants to say thank you to Ajahn together. Okay, so I can I say something? Okay. Yes. So, as the lecturer of Mahajalan Longkorn University assigned us I'm lecturer, assistant to lecture for foreign affair. On behalf of lecture of Mahajalan Local University, we to say and appreciate for the uh, venerable. Thank you for your sharing the knowledge and med meditation practice, uh, history of meditation, and theoretical and practical to all of us. So, on behalf of MCU, or on behalf of a lecture of MCU, to we appreciate and thank you for your sharing the knowledge of to us. So in the next time, we are also planning to set up online program to learn each other. So this is not the last and not the past. So uh, I on behalf of MCU appreciate and for your sharing the knowledge of meditation practice and the uh, history background of meditation and uh, from Western and Asian and China. So, and applying of meditation and today like this, day to day life. So thank you so much for your sharing the knowledge. This is uh, on, on behalf of MCU. Thank you. Thank you, Venerable Dr. Rensu. Yes, may everyone peaceful May everyone be secure, may everyone be healthy, and may everyone be happy. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day. Have a nice day, Ajahn. Yes. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Everyone say thank you. 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 Thank you.